Hello and welcome back to the 8-Bit Guy. I get a lot of requests. Uh, people want to know updates on some of the older projects that I haven't uh, talked about in a while. And so that's what I'm going to talk about in this episode. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to go back two years and talk about the Cat Tower. Once or twice a year I try to create some sort of video that is somewhat of a break from the usual content. And Back in January of 2016 I did this video on my idea for the ultimate cat tree which I called the Kitty Rocket Tower. I built the thing and the cat seemed to love it. If you haven't seen that video I recommend you go back and check it out. I will mention that I used to have three cats but the Noid passed away just a few months after building this tower and she was the oldest at 16 years old and so she had a good life. Fast forward two years and three months. Ok, since over two years have passed I think I can give you a proper update on the cat tower and tell you, you know, what aspects of the design have been successful and what aspects not so great. So uh, let's start with the top. Um, the cats actually do love getting up here on the top. This is one of their favorite places to get and they do scratch up here and sometimes they even climb all the way to the very top. These two rooms here on the other hand, they just they just pretty much don't ever use them. I think it's it's not that they can't get in here, it's just too inconvenient for them to get in here. And uh, so these have been more or less a waste. And so uh, one of the things I'm going to change as I rebuild this thing a little bit is I'm going to remove this wall here and um, make this kind of an open balcony. And then I'm going to, uh, there's a divider in here which I'm going to cut a hole uh, which will allow them to pass into this room here. So hopefully that will make it more convenient for the cats to use this particular level here. Now the dining level, now the whole purpose behind uh, this level was of course so that the cats would have a place to eat and keep their you know, bowls of food without the dog being able to reach it. And that has actually worked out really well. Um, the cats have no problem getting up here, they know exactly where their food is and uh, they use this every day to eat on. As for the uh, rope here you can see they have uh, definitely shredded this and uh, this is definitely something that I'm going to be uh, replacing here. And uh, it has served its purpose well because obviously every bit of shredding they've done here has been uh, shredding they didn't do somewhere else around the house. So <laughs> that's always good news. Um, this particular room here has also been well used. In fact, Pig Bunny sleeps in here almost every night. Uh, they, she doesn't have to climb in there. She can just pretty much jump straight from the ground up. Uh, the bottom level does get used quite a bit too by um, both cats. They sleep on there sometimes. So um, overall I'd say uh, uh, the only major uh, design flaw was of course these two rooms here and um, I'm also going to be replacing this with some carpet in all of these sections. Um, I think the carpet will work out better. So anyway, let's get started. The first thing to do is remove these pads. I've never been very happy with these because they don't have anything holding them in place and sometimes they get stuck to the cat's claws and I'm always having to reposition them. Pig Bunny wanted to give this bit of rope one last good scratching. Unfortunately I lost an entire day's worth of footage on this remodel so we'll skip ahead to the carpet selection. I needed something to hold this carpet flat while the glue dried, so I found good use for all my old vintage laptops. And a few Mac Mini G4s. Ok, 
Okay, time for customer testing. She doesn't seem to want to go in there. And after just a few seconds, she decided she wanted nothing to do with it. Let's try customer number two. Well, she doesn't seem interested either. These cats fail to realize all of the hard work I put into this. And they also fail to realize they aren't performing very well for my video. Oh wait, I forgot, cats are totally selfish. <laughs> well, at least she will use the little door I made. And right back down. Well, she'll probably get used to it after a while. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the Armatron. So a lot of people ask me if I ever got this thing fixed. Well, the answer is no. I actually bought another one exactly like it on eBay, and it had the exact same gear broken. Now, I must have gotten a thousand emails and comments of people telling me I should just 3D print the gear, but the reality is I don't think most people could tell in the video exactly how small those gears were, particularly the little teeth on there. And I don't think, you know, I've, I've actually got a home-based 3D printer, and there's just no way it can print teeth that small. It doesn't have the resolution for it, and even if it did, I'm not sure that it would be strong enough um, to hold up in the environment that this thing has. In fact, I think it's a flawed design because these little um, clamps here, that's uh, that's actually what that gear controls. And it's um, the design is bad because there's nothing to relieve the pressure on that gear once the clamp is completely closed. And so uh, what happens is that the, the teeth on the gear just start jumping. And I think, I think it's a design flaw and I would imagine most of them probably have the same problem. But someday, hopefully, I'll get a working one. So a lot of people have also asked about the LCD project. I had two episodes that I did, and I had promised a third episode where I was going to connect it up to the cartridge port on a Commodore 64 and show how it would work directly communicating with the microprocessor. Well, I never could get it to work. I got it partially working, but I never could get it to work entirely correctly. And so, and so I actually got some help from an electrical engineer who's helped me before on some of my projects here, and uh, he actually created for me <laughs> a really neat little um, cartridge that's um, actually professionally uh, manufactured and it has the LCD on it and it plugs right into the cartridge board on the Commodore 64 and it works. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about this because I'm actually going to be completing part three of that LCD episode really soon. So just stick around for that. Um, next, let's talk about the Osborne. So a lot of people wanted to know, did I ever get the case fixed? And did I ever get the handle fixed? Well, Here's the problem. I got a lot of offers from people that claim to be leather experts and said that they would be happy to re-leather that handle for me that got damaged by the peroxide. So I went ahead and sent off this entire piece, um, which because the handle is riveted onto the plastic, uh, to one of the guys that offered that. And he did say he got it, but I never heard back from him again. I've emailed him a dozen times asking if he'd just please ship it back under any condition and I, he won't answer my emails, so now not only do I have to still try to fix the plastics, but I've got to find a new handle, which I think I may have found one. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do plan on still trying to um, better restore the plastics on this, so you'll probably be seeing it again eventually. Uh, one of the other things I want to talk about, speaking of RetroBright projects, is this Apple IIc. Now, it's not the computer specifically that I wanted to show, uh, but a lot of people are always asking me, well, you know, does RetroBright last? Does you know, do, does, the, does the plastic re-yellow over time? <laughs> well, uh, it's been over two years since I've uh, retrobrighted this one. Now, it has admittedly turned ever so slightly yellow in this area here. I don't even know if it'll show up on camera. It's, it's, not, um, it's not a very noticeable yellow. And all you gotta do is look at the original pictures uh, showing what it looked like before. And you can see this, this was a, a particularly badly yellowed product. So uh, considering what it looked like before, it still looks really nice. And um, so anyway, it'll be interesting to maybe revisit again in another two years and see what it looks like. But, but for now, I'm still pretty happy with uh, how it turned out. And there were two other things I wanted to talk about. So a lot of people ask if I ever got the space bar fixed on the Commodore PET that I restored. Well. I didn't, uh, however, I let my brother borrow the pet for a while and he, he took it upon himself as a challenge to repair that space bar and he did a whole video on his YouTube channel about fixing that space bar and so there is a link uh, to that video down in the description field if you want to go watch it and see um, how he fixed that up. A lot of people have also asked about the custom computer desk I designed and built myself a few years ago. And by the way, I'm putting links to all of these videos in the description in case there are some of these you haven't seen. Anyway, I'm still using that desk today, and it has actually held up really well. 
At the moment, this Tandy 1000 has taken up residence as I'm using it for testing for the CGA and Tandy versions of Planet X3, so it will be staying there for a few more months. And this is the computer I use for all of my editing, which I'm editing this very video right now, um, along with stuff I use for shipping products, such as the label printer and scale. And over here, I keep a Commodore 64 set up most of the time so I can make new copies of Planet X2 as needed, although I don't have the disk drives connected at the moment. The only problem I've had with the desk is that a few of these tiny pieces of tile, uh, like this triangle, have come unglued, and so I just cleaned off the glue and used some epoxy to put them back down, and I haven't had a problem since. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is a lot of people still ask if I still have my 2017 Chevrolet Volt, and the answer is yes. And my wife is also still driving the BMW i3, and we both uh, still love both of those cars, and they've worked out really well for us. And even though both cars do have um, range extending gas engines that we can use if we run out of you know electricity in the battery, uh, the truth is, we rarely use them. Um, I probably haven't bought more than just a few gallons of gas over the last two years. So uh, those cars do work out you know, relatively well as an electric vehicle. So I'm, I'm still uh, very pleased with them. People often ask me if I still recommend those cars to people. And the answer is yes, yes I do. So um, anyway, that about wraps it up for now. Um, if there's any other projects that you uh, want to know uh, any updates on, just send me an email and I'll uh, maybe include that in another episode sometime. So um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching.